Alright, you roguelike bastards. Here is a beginner's guide for the game called Soul Blight. Soul Blight is a newly released game on Steam and it's a gem. A true indie RPG gem. It is very difficult game and you're gonna need some tips to understand it. I've been getting my arse kicked over and over and over again in this game more than in any other that I've played in recent memory. So I hope this video will help you in doing much better than I did. To be successful in this game you're gonna need high synergy. It is by far the most important attribute that you have. I believe maximum is 300% but it's really hard to get to that number. Still, try to get as high as possible. Synergy determines your defense and offense at the same time. That means if you have, for example, synergy at 150%, you're gonna have your offense and defense boosted by 50%. Things that will decrease your overall synergy is blood loss from wounds, hunger and not abiding by tainted rules. Taints are buffs and debuffs that you will get by choosing a different path. I really recommend that you use Taints, because they can increase your synergy significantly. For example, you have Cowardly Taint. That Taint gives you permanent boost to synergy by 2% whenever you use Stealth to kill an enemy. Then you have something like Acquisitive. Acquisitive will increase your synergy the more diverse inventory you have. Then you have Reckless. Reckless will increase your synergy based on the amount of wounds that you have. If you're choosing Reckless Path, always use Black Steel equipment that will immediately put curse on you which counts as a wound and that will give you the buff that you need to increase the synergy. There are plenty more Taints, but you need to choose for yourself how you want to play the game. Taints will determine your playstyle. And if you stay on that path, it can make the game much easier than it is. By pressing an info button on your gamepad, you can check all the taints that you currently have, all the buffs, all the injuries and so on. That is truly helpful in understanding at what type of situation you are currently. Some taint combinations make more sense, for example Reckless plus Fierce. These two complement each other nicely. For example, if you plan on exploring a lot and grabbing all the possible items, then combination acquisitive plus conniving can be a good thing. Conniving gives you boost when you use lockpicks, plus you're gonna receive a lot of lockpicks immediately when entering that path. Acquisitive obviously gives you more synergy the more variety you have in your inventory. So choose these combinations, think for yourself what would be the perfect combination, what would complement your playstyle. If you want to be completely careful killing enemies one by one through stealth, then Cowardly is a way to go. Obviously Cowardly and Reckless does not work together very well, but something like Acquisitive plus Cowardly can be a great boost. Before you even start playing this game, you need to understand one thing. You're gonna die a lot. That means do not get attached to the items. You're gonna lose every item when you die. Except the ones that you put in the storage. The storage system works like this. After respawning and beating the first area, you're gonna get to Sanctuary. Sanctuary has got its own storage chest. When you put stuff into that storage chest, they will be available back at the respawn location when you die. Then you can pick them up from that chest and put them into a drawer somewhere if you want to save them for something else in future. There's a lot of places in that respawn location where you can put stuff in. As for the items that you should always save, I would definitely recommend punch cards because of the prying taint, 
Prying Taint gives you permanent synergy buff depending on how many punch cards you've collected and brought back to the old lady at the respawn location. Another thing that I always like to put into the storage chest when I reach the sanctuary is a weapon of any kind. That way I don't have to start all over again without the weapon. From the sanctuary you have three paths to take. Every path leads to the boss. What I do is this. Before the sanctuary I usually loot all of the things because enemies in there are pretty easy. Then I leave in the storage chest in the sanctuary what I feel are important stuff for future attempts and then choose the path to the boss that I wish to battle. From there on out I'm trying to get to the boss as soon as possible so that I don't have to deal with hunger issues and nasty enemies. The further you go in the nastier the enemies become. Also help yourself by transmutating items. You can transmit it, for example, raw meat into cooked meat or boost your weapons and armor by simply putting those gems and other stuff that boost the transmutation process. When used on weapons and armor, your synergy will rise. For example, you can get plus 3% synergy on a weapon and plus 3% more synergy on an armor. There's a lot of combinations in this game that you can do. You can transmutate anything. During the game you're gonna find also recipes that will tell you how to get upgraded versions of an item when using the transmutation process. Before you have three taints and you can only get three taints after beating the boss and progressing to another taint path, do not kill animals for food that you find in chests because you'll get a remorse debuff. You don't need that. Instead, try buying food at the shops. There's plenty of shops on every area. Next to these normal animals, you're gonna also find Daisy the Frog. Daisy the Frog, whenever you pet her, will increase your synergy level, as long as she is in the inventory. Do not kill her, leave her be in the inventory. Occasionally check back on her in the inventory and pet her again. That synergy can go up to 20% and that synergy will stay on that level even if you die and you find her again somewhere. That's why it's really important to use Daisy the Frog to help you in the long run. Use stealth in later areas as much as possible and kill opponents without them noticing you. The goal in this game is to actually avoid fighting. You get nothing by fighting. If you kill an enemy, you don't get any coins, you don't get any experience, you don't get any rewards. So try to avoid fighting as much as possible. Obviously, before entering the boss room, try using everything that you have at your disposal to buff your character. Mostly that depends on the taints that you have. That would be it for this video, I hope these tips will help you. Next one will be combat guide and also I have first boss done, that cannon thing and I'm gonna upload it soon. Thank you all for watching and see you soon.